Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock. In studio, Drew Phillips is, he, he wants me to, to state it. After he gets me, you know, a couple more buttons flipped and switched, his, his, his dime obligation is over. It's over. Yeah, Nick, Drew, you guys happy now? You get me all hooked up here? Done. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can, you know, we can, you know, muster some other goodies out of you. But, you know, okay, you, you, you have been, you, you have been, uh, Alleved of your responsibility, you happy? Well, yeah. Now we get to use all your goodies for the Agora IO broadcasting. Uh, we'll broadcast from the command bunker here. Oh yeah. Oh, see, that was your motivation. Okay. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted to make sure that he got. You know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll go ahead and have um, this all set up so we can use it. Well, whatever motivation, I don't care as long as You're I get learning. To do, as long as I get to do it. No. So Nick's Nick's chatting with me here on just texting me about the uh, U stream. It's working and. We can hear you during the break. Oh yeah, so. reminder. You get you, you go to the U stream, you get the real Ernie. You know, during the break, you know, just Arr! you know, you know, we, it, it, what we did is we wanted to have the ability to have this be really a one person show. Now, of course, I have to have Sierra, you know, help with the uh, producing and calling deal. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into doing a show and contacting these people and so on, but it's um, to be able to do it without a board op. And, and it's easier because we haven't been taking phone calls. And that's one, the next thing that we really need to work on. And uh, there's different technologies. And we have all the, the high end equipment, man. We got it going on. We can do it. The thing is, is that a lot of times I, I'm not a, when I first started doing radio, we just blew up the phones. I mean, because it was just libertarian in a major market for the first time. And they're like, Wow, what's that? So I spent a lot of time explaining, you know, always challenging the callers that were, you know, the neocons. Yeah, but don't you think in the war and all this kind of stuff. So that was very educational and it was fun. The thing is, is that I, 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 as we get a lot of the guests that we have, I will select a lot of the neocons, a lot of the liberals, the progressives and so on. And that's why people listen to the show. They know what I'm going to say. Yeah, but the thing is, is that these guys have never heard this kind of thing before. They're always getting more of the talk show industry, neocon, progressive, one side or the other. And they rarely do they come on a show where they're advocating for whatever, fill in the blank, unions, military, fly, no fly zone, uh, uh, what's going on with the State Department in the Middle East. Uh, we had uh, a gentleman uh, just this week talking about as the Saudi Arabian military and the United Arab Emirates police forces, 1,500 people killing the people in the streets in Bahrain that he is advocating against right now, as they're doing that, he gets exposed to a libertarian perspective. This is what this show is for. It's educational i'm sure to a lot of the listeners to see how you can answer and bart you know uh, banter with these guys but the thing is is that i'm really trying to infect them because when they go and espouse i give you a perfect example when you're dealing with the dream act people you know uh, illegal immigration and so on the one thing that I, I really have seen it starting to penetrate and become part of the rhetoric is that someone that wants to immigrate here, I'm going, if you, as long as you advocate that you're not willing to take anybody's tax money, no welfare, you know, no programs, heck, you'll even educate your own kid. What, you do that, you become the best Americans. You know, you're, you're better than the citizens here because you're not advocating taking my money. So if you were to do that, if you were to make that part of the condition under which you would be able to live here, man, I'm you're my bestest buddy. So they jump all over that. They start to, you know, forward that idea. Well, of course, then you find out when they, the congressman and so on doing the rhetoric, oh, well, you're taking to We don't want. We're good. We'll take care of ourselves. We just want a job. We just want it not be illegal for me to, like, uh, you know, stand here, you know, in the public thoroughfare, you know, that, that that's illegal for me to just, you know, exist in this area, you know. So doing that has a big impact. Well, one of those people that really has had a big influence on me 
over the years and was the law professor of Mark J. Victor, my partner on the Freedom Summit. Now, he uh, came in Monday, and we just got the hang. He and his wife, Jane, we've been friends for a long time. And Butler came in here and hung out, and Drew and Nick were here doing a lot of the work and finishing up on the studio. And uh, we weren't ready to have them recorded on video, and that's kind of sad, but we got a really great show out of it. Now, after the show, Butler uh, got to hang out in the living room and just sitting there talking, and Drew and Nick, man, I, you know, I'm like, all right, go for it. I'm going to go off, and I got something else to do. Go grill them, man, have, have fun. Because I remember Ben Nichols, you know, another young activist. He's a student. He's going to graduate this year, I think, at ASU political science. I don't know what's up with that. But the, but a uh, very smart young man. He went to the Liberty Forum in New Hampshire with me last year. And it, he has a lot of friends on the internet. He's heavy into Facebook. He does a lot of um, good activism there. And he is a big, giant fan of Butler Schaefer. Well, a lot of these guys, you know, they're, some of them are the last of their breed, the last of their generation. From the Freedom college that was in Colorado that was you know Leonard Reed's uh, thing and those guys that that era those activists those libertarians those anarchists Butler Schaefer is the last one he goes yeah I'm the last one man all these guys they were dying off and I said you know we, we got to get you on Mark Victor said you know let's do that so in April one weekend when he has time, he's going to be speaking next weekend. We'd have him come for the big birthday bash we're doing, top of the hill party. And he's going to be in another state doing a presentation. So the following weekend or one after that, he's going to come here. Before we lose Butler, we want to make sure we get him on camera in an interview, however long it takes, hours and hours, to give us the history of this movement. In just an hour or so, I finally just had time to sit there and talk and give me, who, who's this guy? Where did he come from? How, did they, how come I always hear, oh, we were talking a lot about the Koch brothers. And he referred to him as the Cochtopus. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these guys have started Cato and so on. And I, I, as I do this activism, they keep coming up. And they're always, whenever there is a creation of a movement, because they got billions of dollars, they can do what they want. They go and they incorporate it. They wrap themselves around. They get on the board of directors. They're always wanting to control and direct for some political advantage or whatever it is that they want to accomplish. And the one thing that uh, Butler certainly acknowledges, and I understand, is the voluntarist, the agorist mentality that came out of the revolution. It was always there. It was just became so obvious how broke the political system is. It doesn't work. It doesn't give an opportunity for people to be represented. It's, and, and it's happening all over the world. Those that are advocating for some kind of organized political state directed, allowed permission slip kind of revolution, you know, they, it, you're not going to get that. And that's why I was, I was so heartened by the fact that when Clinton went to meet with the young opposition leaders in Cairo and they go, uh, uh, go away. We don't want to talk to you. What do we want to talk to you about? You know, you know, be gone with you. So when we come back, we're going to get some input from Drew. Maybe we can get Nick call in, and we'll go ahead and talk about how they were inspired and some ideas they have from just one little conversation with someone like Butler Schaefer. We'll be right back here on Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, Drew, and maybe Nick in just a little bit.